I've traveled all over North America with this company and doing this job and uh, I've been to a lot of really interesting, exciting places, but it seems like every time a trip overseas to Europe comes up, uh, AJ jumps in there or Mark is just automatically gets to go and nobody challenges him. And this time we're headed to Finland and we're headed to Finland to see a top secret, all new BRP vehicle, uh, Can-Am model. And uh, when the idea came up, I shoved everybody out of the way and said, Finland, I'm going, I wanna do this. When we got the phone call from BRP uh, a couple weeks ago to come to this event, uh, we thought, okay, cool, standard media invite will be one of uh, many amongst the North American media. But after a little while, we found out that we're the only North American media being invited to this intro. And uh, aside from feeling, you know, pleased and, and honored, flattered, um, there's also a little bit of pressure here because we are being trusted to take the message of this vehicle and to take the the news and the impressions of this vehicle back to the entire North American market and be honest and be fair and describe it in a way that, that accurately shows its capabilities. Um, so there's a little bit of pressure, but at the same time, I'm pretty honored that we're, we're the only ones invited. It's pretty cool. The distance to get to Rovaniemi from North America is what amounts to probably about 20 hours worth of travel. I mean, you, you can't get there direct. You have to go through a, a number of flight segments to get there. And uh, Rovaniemi approximately is about 600 kilometers north of Helsinki. My first impression of the town of Rovaniemi itself is that it's ultra clean. There's no garbage anywhere. There's, there's, I don't even know if there's garbage cans. I don't know what people do with their garbage, but you never see any of it. It's also a very friendly place. People are milling about the town square and riding their bicycles. It's obviously safe because nobody locks the bicycles up. Everybody speaks English, so you feel like you fit right in. The landscape itself is very much like North America, so you actually kind of feel at home. I really liked Rovaniemi from the second I drove into the, the city limits. I felt like this was a friendly place. I was very comfortable, even though I was so far from home. It's really unique when you, when you get into Finland and just in terms of the way that people embrace um, life and the outdoor aspect of it. They always are active, whether they're walking, they're snowmobiling, they're ATVing. If they're not working, they prefer to be outdoors, which is really telling for you know BRP having a facility in Finland as well. I believe that BRP invited dirt tracks specifically from North America because we really do reach the largest audience of any other media outlet uh, in North America. We have so many different ways of reaching audiences through web and magazine and television. Um, we can get their message out efficiently. Uh, we're trusted to do it accurately and fairly. And I think that was why they chose us. No, it's not that too much embarrassing and you, you can enjoy that. As we were watching the presentation in the hotel boardroom, um, the intended purpose of the vehicle was described very clearly. Their uh, BRP's motto for this vehicle is work is play. You know, when you look at the Outlander 6x6, the first thing that comes to mind is basically Polaris's big boss. I mean, the big boss has been around for, for decades, it seems. And what was really surprising to us was how work was offset to an equal proportion with play. They wanted to make sure that when they developed this Outlander 6x6 that not only would it perform well from the utility aspect, but there was little compromise when it came to play. So our goal for Outlander 6x6 was uh, first of all, we were studying what kind of ATVs fits in the Scandinavian market. We're quite soon realized that uh, we have a good uh, product in ATVs, the can -Am, but uh, the utility use in Scandinavia is something that's really important. So we started to focus on that and see what, uh, is there some potential, new potentials we could do and bring up in, uh, within uh, BRP too. So to make the Outlander 6x6 really special, the low gear ratio is a 10% shorter uh, than our closest competitors, meaning that it has more off-road capabilities. And because we've got the biggest engine of uh, the industry, uh, we needed, you know, to, to review the heat management. In terms of a chassis now, uh, of course, uh, 
obvious difference is the third axle, but uh, also one of the biggest ones is the fact that we've got a sway bar as the third axle that you can connect or disconnect. The key benefit of that is you st always stay in contact with the ground with some, uh, with some grip. Thanks to the third axle, you can add many, many loads and up to 800 pounds, but that's not all because on the top of that, you can tow 1,650 pounds, which is uh, also quite impressive. And the last thing which is really specific to the Outlander 6x6 is of course, you know, this uh, cargo box. Every customer is really different. And what I mean by that is uh, nobody has the same needs. Uh, we went with a, a flat bed to make sure that there was plenty of versatility uh, that could be offered to the customer. The thing that stands out most with the Outlander 6x6 is the level of modularity that they built into it. The cargo carrying ca capacity, the configurations that you were able to, to use in that, between forestry, between farming, between wintertime use, that was the biggest thing that stood out for us to begin with. Without riding it, it's hard to know exactly what it's going to be like, but viewing it, hearing its intended purpose, hearing its benefits and features, I'm just trying to figure out what am I going to do with this thing in North America and how am I going to make this work for me? Showing up at uh, Can-Am's ride site in Rovaniemi is a pretty cool experience. They make it very clear that this is not something people just get to do. In fact, we may have been some of the first journalists to ever have stepped foot in that facility. What was comforting, I guess, is that we knew that if we we're going to a test facility, we were going to be falling short in terms of like cool terrain to be able to take this vehicle on. Obviously a test facility is meant to prove a vehicle and we were going to be able to sort of get the best of the best in terms of uh, terrain to, to work with. We finally got to see the 6x6 sitting in the parking lot. Climbing aboard it felt like climbing aboard any other Outlander that I've ever climbed aboard. It feels exactly the same. It just felt like I was at home. It felt like something I was very familiar with. We got it on the trail and our first spot was to stop on the side of this hill uh, in, in kind of an open wooded area. There's no real low branches to their trees so you can ride through the woods. And we just started by climbing up and down some hills and over some rocks. By m most standards, this would be considered pretty extreme conditions. I mean, we quickly got to an area where Yuri, who uh, was sort of our host for the day, took us to an area and he said, go up this hill. So you look at this hill, and this hill was like super steep. It was narrow in terms of the path because there's trees on either side of it. And the path was basically littered with these huge, tall rocks and boulders. And on top of that, it was a misty morning, so everything was wet. As I was riding the vehicle, two things came to mind. First, traction is obviously amazing, and that, that was immediate. I, I noticed it right from the get-go. You could go up any type of hill. Second, it's, it is long, and, and you do notice that third axle while you're trying to turn really tight trees, you end up doing more three-point turns. It's not really a big deal, but you do notice it. From there, we moved on to what was a pretty unimpressive obstacle, to be honest. It was just a ditch right alongside the road. And at one point, you're looking at the vehicle and you realize the center axle is hanging, completely extended, not even touching the ground while you're in the bottom of this ditch. And then it just slowly claws its way into traction and you climb straight out of the ditch. What it highlighted for me was how six by six traction isn't always about having six wheels on the ground. It's about having six wheels that can come in contact with the ground at different times, giving you at minimum four wheel drive when in many situations you would have only had two. And it seemed like that combination made you unstoppable. We then decided to test its hill climbing capabilities even further. So we found this humongous hill on the side of what equates to a mountain. And it's probably one of the more vertical hills I've ever climbed in my life. It was very long. And again, our, our host said, put it in six by six, put it in low range and just baby the throttle. Don't let the wheels spin and you'll make it up. And after we'd done it a few dozen times, it was kind of the challenge was over. It was like, this is easy now, so what's next?
with the Outlander 6x6, what the real eye-opener was for us and what we feel would be the, the big push for North American consumers was basically the on-trail performance. You start riding this vehicle and before you know it, you're going faster and you're going faster and you're going around the corners. Next thing you know, you're counter steering around the corners and the thing is just has so much traction and has so much stability thanks to the longer wheelbase and the uh, TTI rear suspension uh, covering two axles that it just gives you a lot of confidence. And this was, I think, the part of the ride that really opened my eyes to the potential of the 6x6 and what this vehicle can do. It's a 1,000. They didn't even make it as an 800 or a 650. This is the full bore, 81 horsepower, 1,000 motor in here. The faster we rode, the more I realized that six wheels was in no way uh, a negative or a disadvantage to somebody who had four wheels. There's no compromise here at all. And that faster portion of the ride was what really proved that point to me. The thing I was most impressed with about the 6x6 was hands down its versatility. And it's versatile in that it can carry huge loads and tow all kinds of stuff. It's versatile in that you can tailor the flat deck to do all kinds of different things. But it's versatile in that it can work and play equally as well. And I think that those three versatility combinations make for a vehicle that, that has no downsides. It has no compromises. And that makes it a vehicle worth buying in my opinion. We went into this thinking that there's got to be some compromise here. I mean, how can you create a 6x6 vehicle that's designed for utility and then have it really perform well on the trail? But it does. And that's basically the takeaway with this, is that there is next to zero compromise with this vehicle. The Outlander 6x6 will inevitably be compared to Polaris's Big Boss 6x6 because they're the only two 6x6 ATVs on the market, ever, really. And I think that while they are similar in their general idea, they're very different in both their execution and the final result. We really paid a big attention to the market evolution here in Scandinavia, in uh, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. And we find out that uh, these market needs have a lot of sense in many other markets, but for different reasons. By developing you know, our product for local purpose, you can also fit uh, feeds the needs, you know, of Latin America, of Asia Pacific, or wherever else, you know, uh, through the world. Of course, being a, as being a global company for, for customers, it means that um, uh, more or less that you got the, the trust and you got the, the reliability of, uh, uh, let's say, the development process, the innovations, the technologies that are coming up within BRP that uh, they are uh, for you in a way. So it's for the customers. The 6x6 has got unlimited potential in North America. That was absolutely clear to me after a day of riding it. I can't think of anything it can't do. I can only think of things it can do better than what we have now. And the truth of the matter is when I think about what the 6x6 can do, I see all these opportunities to conquer things I thought were unconquerable, to go places I thought were unreachable, to haul things I thought were unhaulable. Um, I just think that there's nothing but potential for this vehicle to any rider in North America who loves to ATV. I have not seen any who has been in the, in the difficult terrain. And when, when he's taking the helmet, wow, he's smiling. Something has happened what he was not expecting. You have to feel it, test it.